I'm with Nick Tyler, Chadwick Professor of Civil Engineering and a Fellow of CIHT. You think and research about topics that span different disciplines. Developments in neuroscience are opening up a far greater understanding into how our brains work. What lessons can we take from this for how we design and build our cities? I think we can use neuroscience to understand much better how we interact with, with systems. So how we respond to a traffic light or a, um, a vehicle moving along a road and things like that. Um, we figure it out and we think about it, but actually a lot of that processing is done inside the brain before we're conscious of it. And we don't really know enough about how that works. So um, neuroscience is a way into that. Neuroscientists themselves, of course, actually are working out how the brain doesn't work and what's wrong with it. And so we're actually educating neuroscientists to sort of change their way of looking so that they, they look much more at how people move around cities neurologically. And that, I think, is a really interesting mix to give us that piece to understand actually how does it all work. And then we can figure out how to design the city to make it do it more easily. Aspects such as people with dementia have a relevance to this discussion. What uh, work have you been involved in in that area? Well, we have a number of projects there. We, we've been looking at what people with dementia see, because um, if you take a, a typical um, Alzheimer's patient, for example, it's the largest of the dementias, um, by the time their vision is affected by the dementia, they've almost certainly lost the ability to communicate, um, so that nobody knows what they see. So uh, we looked at people with a slightly different dementia, a different version of Alzheimer's actually, um, but it starts with the vision so we can then see what they see and talk to them about that and then see how that helps them to navigate. And it's absolutely fascinating. And if we want to uh, understand how to help those people move around an environment and, and you have a person who can see, technically, the, the image that they see seems to be pretty much okay, but they may not be able to compose it. So they might see, for example, two eyes, a nose and a mouth, but they can't put that together as a face. Mm. And so how do we explain a street or a bus to somebody like in, who has that issue? And then and that alters the way we want to design it. We have to really rethink that. So that's one project. Another one um, in Japan where we've been looking at um, a different way of looking at how um, people with dementia are cared for and we've been looking at a city where, which is being designed for, for people with dementia um, so that they can be in the city and, and a large part of that is about um, educating the population of the city to understand people with dementia and not be frightened of them and uh, that means that they can move around the city a lot more easily and they are much much happier I mean, the, the quality of life that they have is way higher than the quality of life of somebody with dementia here so I think we can learn from that and we can learn what it is we need to understand so that we can actually make society much more open to everybody.